Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A warm welcome to all of you who have joined us online for our uh, service, the English service of the Church of the Good Samaritan. Today is a, a special day. We have come for a divine appointment with God. And the psalmist exhorts us in Psalm uh, 30, Sing praises to the Lord, all you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So brothers and sisters, let us arise together and worship the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. I was glad when they said unto me, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. God is spirit. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us ask God to purify us together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's glorify him together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You are the alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's worship Him now.
you, Father, for allowing us, Lord, to come to your presence tonight with such joy, with such adoration. Lord, we just want to come, come to your footstool and worship you tonight. For at your feet, O oh God, is the most high place. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to just sit down. Please be seated as we worship with this song. If the Lord prompts you to kneel, please feel free to kneel. Down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place in your presence, Lord. I seek your face. I seek your face. Down at your feet. Down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place in your presence, Lord. I seek your Seek your faith.
there's no one else we're concerned about but you. For there is only one name, one name that we worship.
Jesus, Lord Jesus, cause us to lift our eyes to you this morning. Cause us to call upon you, for you are our Savior, our Redeemer, our strong fortress, our mighty tower, the Prince of Peace, Counselor, Mighty God. Whatever our circumstances, I pray that this morning, as we gather together to worship you in our respective homes, Lord, you will surround us with your mighty presence. Lord, fill each place that we are in with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Anoint our ears and eyes so that, Lord, we can see and hear what you have to say to us today. Lord, give us hearts that are teachable so that, Lord, we will hear and obey your word this morning. Lord, Minister the word to us this morning with a powerful anointing. We pray for uh, Reverend Cannon as he preached to us this morning. I pray for a freshness to come upon him. And I pray that, Lord, you anoint him through and through, that you use him to speak to us individually in our respective circumstances. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us pray to collect together. Almighty Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for the least of our brethren, we do also for him. Give us this will to be servant of others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. This morning's epistle is taken from Romans chapter 1, verses 8 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verses 8 to 17. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart, is preaching the gospel of His Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now, at last, by God's will, the way may be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I'm obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, 
both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first to the Jews, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let us stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 to 16. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 to 16. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. Today we're going to begin a new series in our preaching uh, of the book of Romans. So let us watch this short video clip uh, so that we have a brief introduction about this book. Paul's letter to the Romans. It's one of the longest and most significant things ever written by the man who was formerly known as Saul of Tarsus. He was a Jewish rabbi belonging to a group known as the Pharisees, and he was passionate and devout to the Torah of Moses and the traditions of Israel. And he saw Jesus and his followers as a threat. But then he had a radical encounter with the risen Jesus, who commissioned him as an apostle, like an official representative, to the world of non-Jewish people called Gentiles in the Bible. And so he started going by his Roman name, Paul, and he traveled all around the ancient Roman Empire telling people about the risen King Jesus and forming his followers then into these new communities called churches. And Paul would occasionally write letters to these new Jesus communities to help them foster their faith or answer questions. And the book of Romans is one of these. It was actually written quite late in his career. Now, we know from the book of Acts that the church in Rome had existed for some time, that it was made up of Jewish and non-Jewish followers of Jesus. But at one point, the Roman emperor Claudius had expelled all of the Jewish people from Rome. And then about five years later, all of those Jews, including Jesus-following Jews, were allowed to return. And when they did, they found a church that had become very non-Jewish in custom and practice. And so this created lots of tension, so that by Paul's day, the Roman church was was divided. People disagreed about how to follow Jesus. They were debating about whether non-Jewish Christians should celebrate the Sabbath or eat kosher or be circumcised. And so Paul wrote this letter to accomplish a few things. He wanted this divided church to become unified and for a practical purpose. He was hoping that the Roman church could become a staging ground for his mission to go even further west all the way to Spain. And so these circumstances are what motivated Paul to write out his fullest explanation of the gospel, the good news that he was announcing about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Now the letter is designed to have four main movements, but it's unified as one long flowing exploration of the gospel. The gospel, Paul says, first of all, reveals God's righteousness, and then it also creates a new humanity, which fulfills God's promise to Israel. And so it's this gospel that's going to unify the church. In this video, we're just going to explore the ideas in chapters 1 through 4. 
So Paul opens by introducing himself as an apostle appointed by God to spread the gospel about Jesus, how he's the Messiah of Israel who was raised from the dead as the Son of God, King of the nations. And Jesus now calls all humanity to come under his loving rule. And Paul says this good news about King Jesus is, first of all, God's power to save people who trust in him, and second, that it reveals God's righteousness. Now, Righteousness is a rich Old Testament word for Paul. It describes God's character, that he always does justice, what is right and what is good, but also that he is faithful and just to fulfill his promises. And Paul's saying that the story of Jesus shows how God has done both of these things. How? Well, he goes first into a long creative retelling of Genesis chapters 3 through 11. He shows how all the Gentile world, all the nations, have become trapped in the spiral of sin and selfishness. The human heart and mind are broken, Paul says. We've turned away from God to embrace idolatry, which means finding ultimate significance in created things and then giving ultimate allegiance to these things that are not God. This results in a distortion of our humanity and destructive behavior. And so what's left is a humanity that stands guilty as charged before a just and righteous God. To which the people of Israel might say, well, it's a good thing then that God chose our people out from among the nations. He saved us out of slavery in Egypt. He gave us the laws of the Torah, like the Sabbath and eating kosher and circumcision. And these all together show us how to live as God's holy people. But, Paul says, not so fast. He recalls the storyline of the Torah and of the rest of the Old Testament, which shows that Israel was just as sinful and idolatrous and morally broken as the rest of humanity. Israel is actually more guilty than the Gentiles, Paul says, because they have the Torah. They should know better. And so, Paul concludes, all humanity, Gentiles, Israelites, are hopelessly trapped and guilty before God. But that is not the final word. The good news about Jesus is God's response. Instead of holding humanity guilty, Jesus came as Israel's Messiah to die on behalf of all people as a sacrifice for sins. As our representative, Jesus took into himself all of the just consequences of the pain, the sin, and the death that we have caused in the world. And he overcame it all by his resurrection from the dead. It's his new resurrection life that he makes available to others. Jesus became what we are so that we might become what he is. And all of this, Paul says, is how God justifies those who trust or have faith in Jesus. Now, justification is another rich Old Testament term for Paul, and it's related to God's righteousness. It literally means to declare righteous. Because of what Jesus did on our behalf, we are given a new status before God. Instead of finding us guilty, God declares that a person is in a right relationship with him and is forgiven. Justification results in a new family. The person who trusts in Jesus is given a place among God's covenant people. Justification also results in a new future, which begins a journey of life transformation by God's grace. And so all of these things about justification are God's gift to those who through their faith are in Christ. And so this leads Paul in chapter 4 to explore the huge implications that all of this has for who can be a part of God's covenant family. He goes back to the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. Before any of the laws of the Torah were given to Israel, Abraham was justified or declared righteous before God. How? Well, God promised that Abraham would become a father of a large multi-ethnic family that would receive God's blessing. But he and his wife Sarah, they were really old. They had never been able to have children. But nonetheless, Abraham had radical faith and trust in God's promise. And so God declared him to be righteous. And so Paul says, now Abraham has become the father of God's new covenant family, and it's spreading all around the world. It's made up of Jews and Gentiles who have the same kind of faith and trust in the one who fulfilled God's promise to Abraham, Jesus the Messiah. So let's pause and summarize Paul's main ideas here in chapters 1 through 4 because they're the foundation for understanding the rest of the letter. All humanity is hopelessly trapped in sin and needs to be rescued. 
That rescue, however, is not going to happen by people trying to obey the laws of the Torah. Rather, God's righteous character has moved him to rescue the world through Jesus' death and resurrection so that he could create that multi-ethnic family of Abraham based on faith as his own new covenant people. And so Paul's going to go on to show how this new family is a part of something much, much bigger that calls them to a whole new way of life together. But it's all going to be rooted in these core ideas explored in chapters 1 through 4 of Paul's letter to the Romans. Well, that is just chapter 1 to 4. This is the longest uh, book, I would say, uh, and also most important book um, or uh, epistle, an epistle letter that uh, Paul had uh, written. Uh, this is very important for us to study the book of Romans. I know uh, in many commentary or even seminars and conferences when they talk about Romans, it's just packed of uh, uh, theological issue, doctrinal issue, or even on ideology about this book. So we're going to break it down and uh, week by week and uh, based on the daily living water, I hope the devotion, the daily devotion will help us to understand the book in the more e uh, in the easier way because I believe the Word of God is always for us to understand. Amen? So we just need to prepare our heart so they can receive uh, the Word of God. Eh? Uh, I hope I can expound the, the, the Word, the, the book of Romans in a more simpler way uh, so that we can all understand. Uh, the important is that not just we know about the Jesus of the book of Romans, but also to learn how to apply all these uh, important lessons inside. Well, uh, back to uh, Rome, eh? uh, Italy. Uh, what comes to your mind about Rome? Pizza, uh, pasta, uh, risotto, lasagna, uh, tiramisu, uh, cabrona, uh, caba, cabolana. Uh, what else? Uh, huh? uh, I mean, that is Italy. Uh, full of uh, coffee, coffee. Uh, no, I mean, that how people describe about Italy or Rome at that time, and then about uh, empire, um, about uh, power, also a lot of immorality, <laughs> lust, uh, and a lot of uh, interesting stories. But here, the book of Romans that was written by Paul himself to the Roman Christian, I believe, um, the book of Romans has changed a lot of people's life, including Martin Luther. Uh, Martin Luther has changed the way he looked at faith and also understanding about the salvation. That's why later on in his commentary of the book of Romans also changed, changed uh, uh, John Wesley which later on, John Wesley had bring about the Wesleyan uh, revival and swept through the whole of England and bring transformations to the nation. So here, I believe the book of Romans is still continuing and uh, in a way of speaking to us. Now let's start with the first lesson here. Living according to God's will. First of all, we need to know how do people call us. I mean, this is the worst that started by... Paul himself, he said, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart of the gospel of God. So how do people call you? I believe people who take out a possession as teacher, uh, eventually people will call you old sensei, lao <laughs> si. So old teacher, old one, for me lah. At that time, why, why teacher always call lao si, not nian qing si, a younger one, a young sensei, you know? Or you become a cook, people start calling you shave, eh? even though it, that is not your Christian name. I remember recently when I was called to, um, to do the change of the signatory, one of the signatory of uh, the, the bank account for the diocese. So I went to this bank. Um, after they checked on my IC, it's supposed to be just very straightforward. I just go there to endorse my IC and sign my signature there. That's all. But they say, sir, you have a problem with your name. I say, huh? That's, that's my name, Chin Pit Wun. So he said, no, no. The one that they gave it to me uh, is 
uh, Canon Chin Bit Wun. I say, no, Canon is not my name. But then they say Canon Chin Bit Wun. I say, no, my name is Chin Bit Wun. Then all of a sudden I realized they do not understand Canon is actually not my Christian name. They thought Canon is my Christian name. Eh? Why is that Canon is not in your IC? Uh, <laughs> I say, no, that is just one of the title. I'm glad also, nothing personal, no offense. I'm glad my surname is not Wong. No? Canon Wong, eh? Tai Pao Wong. Oh. Uh, so that will be uh, even worse. So how do people call you today? After all, we are called by God. He put us into a very special and unique vocation. That to determine a line that God wants us to have it the full, the best that we can, if we live now according to His will. Paul said, I'm the servant of Christ Jesus. Do loss. You remember the, so the boat many, many years ago? Do loss servant or a slave of Christ. Many people don't like the word slave. Estimated at that time, about 60 million slaves in Rome. Right? So once you are a slave, you probably, a whole generation, your children, your grandchildren, all the way, the whole family line will be called a slave. And Paul called himself a servant or a slave of Christ. Now, a slave was looked uh, more like a piece of property, not a person. But Paul, in the loving devotions that he had to God, to Christ, he enslaved himself to Christ to be his servant and obey his will. Slave or a servant of Christ. And he also said that himself as an apostle means that the one who sent by authority with a commission, he was sent by God as an op apostle to do the work of God. And for what? To set apart. He has to set apart for the gospel of God. In other words, he will do everything, anything in his life for the gospel of God. Nothing else. Everything that he do, he will link it and do it for the gospel of God. That's why he was set apart. Nothing else. Just set apart for the purpose for the gospel of God. So come back to the word slave of the servant of Christ. Do loss. A servant or a slave will not do things that in the area which is not belong to the master's field. He will only do things in his master's field. So today, if we call a servant of Christ, in Indonesia, always people call you hamba Tuhan, means the servant of Christ. That word itself is a very serious and require a high responsibility. When people call you hamba Tuhan, means you only do things in Christ's field. As Christ as a master, we as a slave or as a servant of God, we will do things only to please Him and also in His kingdom. So today, this is the way we will live out our life. If we can find out what God's will in our life, doesn't matter what possession, what jobs, what career that we're having right now, let us learn from Paul that we will do it for the gospel of God. It is not just a full-time worker or reverend or canon or a pastor or cell leader or TD group leaders or any lay leaders in a church can do the evangelism work. All of us are called to do something that will share the good news of God. Amen? Of course, we are not focused on what happened after verse 1, which is from verse 2 to verse 6, that Paul talked about gospel. I believe later on, in the following chapters, we have plenty of time to discuss more about the gospel of God. But here, very briefly, verse 2, he proved that this is a gospel. The gospel origin. From who? This is from the ancestor, from the prophets that bring down this good news. And then verse 3 to verse 4, here there's a talk about the content of the gospel. Of course, it's about Jesus Christ, His death and His resurrection. And verse 5 to verse 6 is about the effect. What uh, can the gospel uh, transform or changes one person's life? And that itself, with these few verses, he has bring down what is the gospel. But like I say, we are not going to discuss on that according to this title that we want to look at 
uh, Paul, what he had mentioned from verse uh, 14 onward. Here, I will bring down three things, list down three, three things here, which is very important for us to learn. How to live according to God's will. First one, of course, Jesus has seven very famous I am. Lah. I am the great shepherd, I am the, the, the light. You know? Here, Paul also had three I am. The first one, he said, I am obligated. Uh, this is a word that I think many of us today, you are in debt, you are really, I mean, pretty sure what is about obligation. There are two scenarios here. One, you will call a debtor, which you, are, you borrow some money. If I borrow money from Christina, then I'm the debt, uh, Christina is my debtor. I'm, I, I'm obligated. Uh, I need to pay back. Eh? Uh, but another scenario here is that someone has entrusted us a certain amount of money, same amount of money like 1,000 ringgit. Like for instance, Christina trusted, entrusted me 1,000 ringgit to borrow this money to Reverend Roji. So until Reverend Roji pay back to Christina, I'm, a, I'm obligated to Christina, even though it's not me. But then because he had entrusted that money to me, to loan it or to borrow it to, to, to Reverend Roji. So this is a decision. No, it's not about that we borrow something from Christ, then we are obligated to Christ. Here, Paul didn't obligate it to Rome, Romans, uh, but then he said, I'm obligated to the Greeks, non-Greeks, both to the wise and to the foolish, because God had entrusted that gospel, the gospel of God to him. That's why he, he was uh, kind of obligated to do that. So here, we are in debt because Jesus Christ had entrusted us with the gospel. So, uh, as we are the debtors in the world, gospel that had come to us, we had no liberty to keep it, neither uh, we should just forget about it. Our job, as Paul said, I am obligated, is to share it, to share it with others. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to verse 18. This is how he put himself into that obligation. He said, Yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. I mean, he cursed himself that he do, if he do not pay back this debt about the gospel which Jesus Christ had entrusted to him. If I preach voluntarily, I have a revolt. If, I'm, if not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. When then is my reward, justice, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge and so that make use of my right to, in preaching it. So today, if we want to live according to God's will, many people will spend time like fast and pray, go to somewhere else to find God's will in their life. Today, I just give you one very genuine and universal. Uh, all of us, and this is the truth, all of us are in debt with the gospel, with Christ. We are obligated to the gospel of God that God has entrusted to us, as long as we believe in Christ. Today, you are called Christian, the gospel is entrusted to you. And we have the duty, we have the responsibility, we have the calling this vocation is not just about full-time calling. All of us are called to share the gospel. If we can put this then later on at the end, you will understand how do we really find out the views of God in us that we will not waste our time by running around and walking so many unnecessary journey that we hit and bump into war, chong piao. Then at the end, we still puzzle after 50 years old we still sit down and say lord what is your will what is god's will a lot of people have expound and discuss and explain and even seminar to teach about how to find god's will here in romans at the beginning of this book in chapter one paul had indicated that to us if we can put this like i say i am obligated because of the gospel of God, you're on the way to find out what is God's will in your life. So bear with me until the end. I will ask you three questions that you know how to apply. 
this tree I am here. The third, as the second one, I am so eager. Therefore, I am so eager. He said in verse 15, that is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome, not just to others. This gospel of God here, not just for these people, just for the people in uh, Syria or in Presidian Antioch or other places that he went through the first and the second missionary journey. Even though this is the third one, he had never been there. He had never been there. But he said, I'm so eager. It seems like Paul knows this is the final journey, which is true. We know that he was a um, um, martyr in, in Rome later on. He was executed in Rome after well, the twice of being imprisonment. Somehow he knows this is the final journey, the final station. That's why may, before that, he already said to many of the elders of the Christian fellow colleagues or leaders, he said, my time of departure is he's here. It's f- time for me to move on. To where? To Rome. I mean, do you have the same eagerness in you? If you know that this is the final journey, the final place for you, you're going to end there? Some of us say, hey, no, not yet, not yet. Hey, let, me, let me do other things first before I want to go here. But Paul said, I'm so eager because of the gospel. God did not send us, a, did not set a very high standard for us to do, to share his gospel. God didn't say, well, you must go through theoretical training for four years until you get a degree, you get a PTH, then you can start sharing the gospel. God didn't say, oh, okay, you must graduate in this theological school or you must go through in this kind of training or you must go through PMM, <laughs> uh, uh, what, 12 modules. This afternoon, I'm going to start another module uh, with the ATI students. God didn't set that kind of standards. Neither he said, hey, we should just go empty-handed and just trust me. And you go there, the Holy Spirit will help you to teach. We will just need to do our best. God always wants us to give our best to Him, that according to the talents that He had deposited in us. One God had deposited that talents in us that we shouldn't bury it, but use it in the full. If you give it five talents, use it and earn five more. If you give it two, use it and earn two more. Don't bury it like the one that received only once. Today, many of us probably will think that the things that we are doing right now is not important and neither there's any connection with the gospel of God. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, today only until we know that we are obligated to the gospel of God and then we move on until we have this kind of attitude that we have that kind of eagerness in us to share that whatever that we are doing right now, we will do it for the gospel of God. You can be an evangelistic cook. You can be a person who are the best architect in town, and yet at the same time, as an evangelist, even though as a sportman right now, we can also share the gospel in the Olympic. I hope if you have a chance in the midst of us, who knows, one day you represent Malaysia and get a gold medal. Please, and do remember, the first thing that you should give thanks, you should give thanks to God. We will find, if we have that kind of eagerness in us, we will find opportunity, even in the wedding itself. Many times in the pre premarital counselling, I do remember, remind the, the couples, hey, remember, in the banquet uh, at that night you must thank God first but I think 9 out of the 10 have forgotten that they always thank their parents I mean nothing wrong I mean it's important they thank their parents they thank their mom they thank their dad they thank their in-laws they thank their uncle if their uncle help in the, and they thank the cell group who run the, the registration they run the whole thing they even thank the, the waitress of the, uh, the restaurant and then they only, if they still remember, I'm not saying they're okay. It's still not okay. Always they will leave it until then. Uh, 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 what? Uh, last but not the least. <laughs> I want to thank God. I mean, you, you, just, you just leave it until the end. No? Today, we should have 
change our eagerness of sharing the gospel, that will change the way we so-called, like, the way we treat the gospel. By sharing it at the first place, not the last place. Neither we should forget about it. So whatever you do today, brother and sister in Christ, do it for the gospel of God. With that kind of eagerness in you, you will do the best in your work that will project or even to magnify, to declare, to proclaim, to share and talk about Christ in your work. Let people can see that in your product. Let people can see that in your success. Let people can see that even in your failure. That people will know, wow. I mean, Paul is not just a person who has success all the time. Sometimes he felt he meet difficulties and so on. But yet at that time, he still thank God, he said. And he said, the grace of God is sufficient for me. Even though shipwrecked, even though I was beaten, but I still have that eagerness to share about the gospel. Amen. So do not wait until everything becomes okay. Then we start sharing the gospel. Now is the time. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 to verse 23, Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone. Not just to Christ, now he said to everyone. You remember when he was, he read uh, in, in Corinth, and this is what he said, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew, like to win the Jews. And to those who are under the law, I became like one under the law though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those who not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under God, Christ's law, so as to win those who not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I mean, this is what he want to do. I have become all things to all men, so that, say we meet together, by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I am shared in His blessing. Amen. The kind of eagerness. So if you are a cook, share the gospel. Become like a good cook. If you are a teacher, think about it. Thousands of students are put in front of you. Of course, right now it's no more. Lah. But when you get back to the physical, you Think about it. Thousands of students are put in front of you every day. Whether they like it or not like it, they will come and listen to you. From Monday to Friday, that is your vocation. So I always want to charge up our teacher right now. Don't just be a teacher, you become a principal. <laughs> some, some try to run away from me because I look at the teacher, I will talk to them. They are one sister of a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, was it last year? Uh, before, definitely before pandemic, when she came back, he said, nah, because of you. Lah. <laughs> because I challenged her. Hey, become a principal. Don't just, just satisfy to become teacher. Be the best that you can in your vocation. So now he's not, she's not a principal, but then she are on the way and also involved in a higher position than just a normal teacher. So this is what we do. I'm not saying that all of us must become full-time worker, but if God call you in that career, be the best that you can to glorify God and share about the gospel. Amen. So Acts chapter 21 verse 13, then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord. This is before that. People weep about him and uh, try to Keep him, hey, don't go. But they say, why? He's ready for the gospel. The eagerness in it, even up to death. I'm ready to go. Don't stop me. Today, if you have the amount of obligation about gospel and the eagerness about the God sharing the gospel, nothing will stop you. You will not be so reluctant to share the gospel. Neither we should... Uh, we will kind of avoid it, no? Because of that kind of attitude we have, we will find opportunity. We will find ways to talk about 
Jesus Christ to share the gospel of God. Amen. And last, I am not ashamed. The third, I am here. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God, the salvation of everyone who believes, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. Not easy for him because as a slave of Christ or even just a Christian, when you move to Rome, socially, people will look at you as related to a carpenter, followers who died and crucified on the cross. And uh, most of them, Christian community in Rome, are slaves. Like slave, slave. It's not just by servant of Christ, it's slave. So they are considered and treated as the lower class. How much more poor as a tent maker? Go over the place. It's not the well known people, except well known for in the community of Christian. But other than that, how would this nation that full of great philosophers, great philosophies, they are very wealthy, powerful. They're living in the more civilized um, nation. For us, I mean, for Paul to talk about Christ, I'm not sure whether it will well accepted by them or not. It will bring a amount of shame around the people. Huh? You want to be a Christian? Uh? Mean you will be a slave. Just like today, as we sit among friends during reunion dinner, of course now it's not that often. Reunion dinner after 20 years, as we leave, uh, after leaving secondary school, sit down together, people will start sharing, oh, I have a big house. Uh, how big is a house considered as big? Uh? 3,000 square feet, quite big, huh? Very big. Two stories or three stories, bungalow. I'm driving BMW Series 7. I'm driving Mercedes Benz Sport Series. I'm driving this, I'm driving that. And all of a sudden, until you. <laughs> like, like for me, if I take an example, if I sit around my friends, if I feel ashamed of what I am doing right now for the gospel of God, I will probably a bit, no? Gola, uh, gola, yeah? So what is your job? Ah, uh, Reverend. What? Reverend, uh, pastor, pastor, pastor. Because their perception is that pastor is poor. Uh, even some of them say, hey, God, God, God. I'm not doing free of charge. I still receive my salary. So how do we survive? <laughs> you know, they kind of assumption on them. But because I'm not ashamed of my vocation, I'm not ashamed of God's calling on me. Sometimes I joke around with them. I see, oh, I, I got seven cars. Sometimes it changes. It depends. Formerly I have one, two, three, four. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cars, seven vans and one car, including my own car. Eight. Not bad, huh? Uh, they have problem with parking space at home because there are too many cars. I say I have no problem with my parking place. I have hundreds of them. <laughs> I draw around with them because I shouldn't feel ashamed of God's calling in me. If we can put aside that, then we can stand firm among what we call the world. I mean, we can start with prayer, say grace, saying grace before you eat. Going for vocation or a business trip, going for seminars, Sunday, seminar is still on. Will you feel ashamed to say that, oh, I want to worship God, I cannot go. Sometimes people say, hey, don't say so, lah. don't say so. And then people say that, oh, yeah, yeah, you Christian. Uh, uh, 
if we are not ashamed of the gospel, then we can share the gospel freely. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 to verse 33. Such a serious charge from Jesus to us. He said, Whoever acknowledges me before man, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before man, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. So are you ashamed to preach the gospel among your circle? Will you proclaim or project yourself as a Christian? Whatever you do. That's why Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to verse 16, the gospel reading, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under the bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and they give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We need more of this. As we find out the way to live according to God's will. Think about it in this community. If all Christians can do this, shine before men. And can say that I am not ashamed of the gospel, even though you call me slave, you call me full time worker, you call me Christian. Huh? Haka always say last time in the school, they joke and uh, ridicule us. Yasu zai, yasu moi. Friday we go for ISCF, they say, Yeah, yasu zai, yasu zai, yasu moi. No, I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel. So if we can do that with the obligation that we have, I am obligated to the gospel. I am eager to share the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel that I believe we are living in a genuine views of God. And this is a basic. You don't need to find out more. We can start with that. So as I promise you these three questions, how do you apply this? You say, probably, Canon, is it easy for you because you are a full time worker? Your job is to share the gospel, your job is to do evangelism. How about us? How do we apply? As we say, sometimes you say, you don't probably, we do not know your situation. But this is three simple questions you can ask yourself. First one What are you good at? Are you really good at? the things that you are doing right now or just simply because you want to do it to survive? You need to ask these questions. What, do you good, what are you good at? Then second, what do you love? Is it the, one, the things that you love are same with the things that you are doing right now? It is different that you are in trouble. Because with that, one day you lost the good that you have, the ability for you to do good in your work, then you lost your job, your career. In other way, if you lost the love in what you are doing right now, even though it's not the same, then you lost the interest. You lost the fervency, you lost the passion in your work. But if you can find out and link it together, what are you good at? Like for instance, you are good at cooking, then you become a good chef. Then you need to ask, do I love to cook? Or just because I cook, want to earn some money? Or just want to be a ah, celebrity? People can praise me. But if we can link it to it, because I love cooking, that you put it together, you know that you can be a good cook and you can be the one that can add value in your work, in your life. That love itself is the additional value that you can put on to your vocation. Without this, it will just normal. Normal means when things die down, when you lost your ability, physical ability, you lost any of those like I mentioned just now, then we stop and people start giving up. And some people will think like, oh, I should end my life now. 
is done. It's not finished yet. It is not finished yet. If we can add value in your love, we can do until the last breath that we can to serve the Lord. Amen? Then the third question is, what do trusted people notice that you are good at? It's not just about us. It's not just about what we are good at. It's not just about what we love. But we also need to ask, when people notice that we are good, like for instance, I could at cooking. <laughs> I know my, my calling to be a pastor, to share the gospel. I'm good at that. I'm good at preaching. I'm good at, uh, well, casting out demons. <laughs> so I don't need to ask, do I love to cast out demons? Yes, I do. You find one, I will go. Yes. Without a doubt, I will go. But I need to ask also, well, the people that around me notice that I'm a good spiritual gold buster. <laughs> if not, then we miss out something in our life. If we can answer these three questions, you are living according to God's will. Trust me. Ourselves to God and how people look at us. Well, people notice us. Paul definitely is the one. People notice what he did in his life after he was converted and become a follower of Christ. That few years in his journey that he had no regret, even at the end he needed to be executed in a history that he was uh, cut off beheaded, but yet as a servant of Christ he know that he want that what he want to do how about us today are we living according to God's will, let's answer that three questions reflect on it brother and sister in Christ it is not too late, it is not too late just in case we have missed out one of those get back to God get back to God and ask the Spirit of God to help us, to show us the way. But some of the basic things you can start with is the gospel of God. You can say that three I am. I am obligated to a gospel. I am obligated to, uh, uh, I am an eager to share the gospel. And also, uh, that the third one, uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I believe we are on the way to live out according our life according to the will of God. So some of you probably are making decisions in life right now because of this pandemic. Uh, hey, should I change? Uh, should I change my business right now? Should I try out new things? Ask, what are you good at? What do you love? Don't just do it to survive because survival will only last temporarily. You need to ask these questions. If the things that you are doing still something that you are good at, you still love to do it, and people notice that hey, that is your best, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Because God will surely open the way for you. You just need to be patient and go through this period of time. Just in case you notice that, yeah, it's time off. Because all this, well, what I'm doing is actually just for the salary. Because now, probably some of us have received pay cut or loss of business, loss of income. Then all of a sudden, you find out, hey, that is something that I'm not good at, actually. It's basically, I just do it for the, the salary. It's time for you to change. Find out something that you're good at. Add value, add love inside that you see you will be excelled in what you are doing and living according to God's will. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the Lord, by your word through the book of Romans, will continue to guide us as we have started chapter 1 today, looking at Paul, such an amazing guy, the one that, Lord, you call as a servant, as an apostle, as set apart for the gospel, how he have sold 
uh, the attitude that he had to do what the best that he can do for the gospel of God. Father, I pray that the same vocation, same calling will fall upon us, all of us, that we can find out God's will in our life. Help us not to waste any time, but to really capture every opportunity to share the good news of God. Because that is what, Lord, the Lord, you have entrusted to us. Help us, O oh Lord. Let the Holy Spirit guide us and fill us as we continue to do so. When we are weak, Lord, strengthen us, O oh Lord, so that we will not lose heart, but then continue to be fervent in our sharing, in our uh, 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 serving as a servant of Christ. Lord, we commit all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In response to the sermon, let us now stand together to reaffirm our faith. Together, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that, that is, is seen and, and unseen. unseen. I believe, I believe in, one, in Lord, one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the, only Son, the of only Son of God, eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, brother and sister. Again, want to welcome all of us to join uh, in this online worship uh, service. Of course, some of us probably first time here joining the Church of Good Samaritan. I want to welcome you. Please continue to join us next week. So our worship uh, services time from the Chinese one, 7.45, English 9.45, then the BM 11.45. For the time being, this is our arrangement uh, as we continue to pray so that one day when things get... Uh, uh, better, we can come back here to worship God uh, on site. Okay? Let me highlight to you some of the announcements from the bulletin. First of all, is uh, this book, 40 Days Fast and Pray. I believe uh, some of us have got it, the, the hard copy, but we do send out some digital copy. Uh, if you want to obtain one, please ask from the office, or you can ask some of the DD group leaders. You can get their information from the bulletin so that uh, you can download it uh, for the digital copy. I want to strongly encourage all of us. In fact, it's already started yesterday eh? uh, until 15th of September. Uh, it's a kind of short, uh, very brief, easy to understand, easy to follow the guidelines, and we pray together. Eh? Uh, so that the main thing is that this is a time for us to be still and know our God. In this chaotic moment, uh, many of us, if we are not careful enough, we also join in this chaotic movement. Eh? Please, eh? at this time, we learn from this verse from Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. This is what God wants us to do at this moment. Just calm down and be still and uh, be silenced. Another word, and know that God, He is God. Amen. So please obtain one copy so that you can follow through uh, uh, in these 40 days fast and pray. Now, about prayer, on Tuesday morning, uh, CCM Council of Churches of Malaysia have organized one special prayer meeting called the Lord Help, uh, Heal Our Land. Uh, this is a day of fasting and prayer. 
uh, we will join together with all the brother and sister in Christ throughout Malaysia churches. Okay, so this is the online prayer. The link is there, and it's also inside the bulletin. So do not be worried because uh, if you are th you are thinking like I'm more comfortable with other languages, they have prepared six languages. When you get into the link, um, they will ask you to choose. There are Chinese, uh, Mandarin should also I think should be Mandarin, uh, English, uh, BN, uh, Iban, uh, Korean, and also Tamil. Right? So six languages you can choose one of those, and uh, um, you go in. Then you join others uh, to pray together. Three hours, 9 to 12. Just in case you say, I have something on in uh, no, 11 o'clock, 11.30. But at least you join in uh, for one or two hours. But the best is that you can join in three hours. I'm so sad that I cannot join because I uh, have my ITI class on. But I do want to encourage all of us here um, to really set aside that time. It's public holiday. We will not celebrate that festival. <laughs> Uh, then we can come together and pray online and join others. Amen. Now, because of that, the, uh, our normal, our usual weekly English online prayer meeting uh, call off. And I just want to encourage those who are joining the online prayer meeting, uh, you can join this Lord Heal Our Land uh, special one day fasting and prayer online prayer meeting. Amen. Now, um, the rest of the announcements, please take note from the bulletin. I just want to highlight and report to you about our welfare. Um, we want to thank God for your generosity and your donation, your contributions about uh, the food aid 2.0. Uh, because of this recent uh, increasing of the uh, COVID-19 cases, we are called off until then, until further notice. But I want to report to you the amount of uh, families that we reach out uh, 71 families for our own member and then 68 families that is uh, through the literacy class students and 301 families that is non-church member so we want to praise the Lord this time we can reach out to more instead of just looking at our own member that I want to pray that you will continue to do so and are prepared for once the food egg 2.0 resume that will continue to help more. Amen. Yeah? Now, in conjunction with that, last week, we already started what we call a special Diocese Sunday. We have four special Sunday in a year. Provincial Sunday, Vocation Sunday, Welfare Sunday, and also Mission Sunday. So this is the whole month, month of August, is for, for the uh, uh, Welfare Sunday. So all this while, uh, Church of Good Samaritan always on the top one, uh, or the second or the third. We are so generous. I want to continue to call for your generosity to contribute for this Welfare Sunday. You can transfer online or bank in. Just mention that this will direct uh, for the Welfare Sunday. They will channel the money for the diocese. Uh, in recently, because of the pandemic, diocese has used more than 200,000 to help some of the smaller churches throughout Sabah. Okay? Our own Anglican church. Okay? Um, Today, we can do so, not just to care and concern about our community here in KK or Pinampang, but when we can expand that help to uh, through up Sabah, even though we cannot go there physically, but through the diocese, the money itself can help them. Amen? So may I call you, uh, may I urge you and uh, uh, encourage you to give generously for this. The rest of the announcement, please take note from the bulletin. Let's all pray together. Let us now quieten our hearts as we draw near to God and approach His throne of grace in the time of intercession. Our intercession this morning will be anchored on Psalm 121, verse 1 to 2. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Lord God, indeed, we want to give you thanks that in the midst of unprecedented uh, times of chaos and uh, disruptions, we are able to come together to worship you. We are able to hear your word preach uh, mightily and forcefully to us, O oh Lord God. We are able to hear your reminder to live a life that is pleasing unto you, one that is not ashamed of the gospel that we are to remain eager in the midst of all these circumstances to preach the gospel, that we are obligated to Christ, the Saviour of our souls,
who has called us to follow after him. We thank you that when we call unto you, you have always answered us. We thank you that we can see your grace uh, in everything that we do in our church, in our families, and in our workplace. We thank you that, Lord, for your protection and mercy over our three congregations. Lord, we lift up our church to you this morning. We pray that those who are in need in the three congregations will call out to you, knowing, O oh Lord, that you are our help, our strong tower, our refuge in times of trouble. We also ask that, Lord, you pour out the spirit of unity and love among all of us, that we look out for each other, that we support and strengthen each other in these difficult times. We also pray for the kindergarten ministry. We ask, O oh Lord, that you uh, strengthen Evelyn, the principal, and the teachers, and a support team in this time of financial difficulty and revenue uh, a collection uh, decrease, O oh Lord God. Help them, O oh Lord God, to trust in you. I pray that, Lord Jehovah Jireh, you will come and meet their needs in every way. Help them, O oh Lord, to know that you are a faithful God in this time of testing, help them to remain strong and steadfast in their ministry to the children. We lift up our diocese to you at this time. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the past six decades of your faithfulness and your favor towards the diocese of Saba. Thank you for providing us with servants throughout the three other generations, O oh Lord God, to preach the gospel and to uh, minister to the people. We ask, Lord, that in this time that you will send your voice to call out across the diocese, to seek out uh, people from the younger generation to rise up, O oh Lord God. Lord, you know who they are. Help them, O oh Lord, to be able to discern your voice calling them. Help them, O oh Lord, to hear you and to know indeed that, Lord, you are the one who called them and that you will be faithful, O oh Lord. Bring us the workers for the harvest, O oh Lord God. In this time, O oh Lord, we believe that you will do a mighty new thing in our diocese through these turbulent times. Father, we lift up our nation to you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you intervene in the situation in Malaysia. That, Lord, though we know that all things are under your control, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you will bring order into the chaos. That in the time of or uh, uh, div divisiveness and turbulence, O oh Lord, you will, you will bring stability to our nation. Help our leaders, O oh Lord God, to cast aside all personal agenda and to prioritize the needs of the people, especially those who are going through economic difficulties at this time. Father, we pray for the 40-day fast and prayer beginning yesterday, O oh Lord God. I pray, O oh Lord, for a spirit of intercession to be poured out upon the land of Malaysia, that your Holy Spirit will move across the land and into our churches, O oh Lord, that the body of Christ, O oh Lord, will be on fire for you in this 40 day of prayer and fast. I pray for extraordinary things to happen as a result of the daily intercession. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will call us to be watchmen on the walls of Malaysia, over our states, over our communities, over our churches, and over our families. O oh Lord, do not let the darkness overcome our country. Help us as the Church of Jesus Christ to arise and to stand watch at this hour. Bless the churches at this time, O oh Lord God. For our state, O oh Lord, we call out to you and ask that, Lord, you pour out your mercy upon the state of Sabah. Lord, many are being infected by the virus, and the state resources are being strained at this moment. Lord, you have said, is anything too difficult for you? You are the creator of heaven and earth. Lord, we ask today that you stop the plague over Sabah, that you stop the pandemic spread. Oh, Lord God, that you keep our people safe, from the infection, and that those who are infected will receive your healing through Jehovah Rapha. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, 
We submit all these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We have now come to a time of uh, confession. Let us prepare ourselves. If you wish to sit, you may. If you wish to kneel in the posture of repentance, you may also do so. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Together, merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We <coughs> repent and are truly sorry for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you, and deliver you from all sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep you an eternal life. Amen. I invite all to stand. Now that we have been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. So we must make peace one another in the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also, also with you. you. Let's greet each other with the peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Lift up your hearts <laughs> to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy always and every way to give you thanks and praise. For, and praise. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and now we give you thanks because you have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a, a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself. He instituted in, in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memories of his precious death until he comes again. Here is merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, and remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together we proclaim, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Blessed are those who are invited to the feast of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and give glory to God. These gifts of God, of the people of God, draw near with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine and remembrance of Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us, let us pray as our Saviour taught us together. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your, your will, will be done, be done on, on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against, against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Together. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have fed us with the spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. I invite you to stand to receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ, Christ. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, we have now reached the conclusion of our service. May you experience the increasing goodness and mercy of our God in the coming week. See you again next Sunday.